Chapter 13A, Section 13.2, we're going to look at solutions, suspensions, and colloids. Distinguish between soluble and insoluble. Identify examples of each. Distinguish between solutions, suspensions, and colloids. Describe the Tyndall effect and categorize examples as a solution, suspension, or colloid. So, first of all, soluble versus insoluble. A substance is considered soluble if it is able to be dissolved. So, for example, salt in water is an example of a substance that is able to be dissolved. Salt can be dissolved in water. Insoluble is a substance that will not dissolve in a given solvent. So something very simple would be like sand in water, in which the sand would never dissolve. In chemistry, we're going to find out other substances, such as silver chloride, for example, is not able to be dissolved in water. So this is known as an insoluble compound. So solutions, suspensions, and colloids. A solution is when you have particles that are so small that they are able to completely disappear. You can no longer see them. They'll actually separate into ions whenever they're placed into the solution. So it's homogeneous throughout. And again, the particles are not visible. Particles are not visible. In a colloid, the particles are not small enough to dissolve, but they're also not large enough to sink. So they're kind of like medium-sized particles, and so you could kind of think of them as particles that float. And what they do is, if you were to shine a light through a colloid, it would exhibit something known as the Tyndall effect, where the light would be scattered or separated by the floating particles. This is only shown by a colloid, and the Tyndall effect is used to distinguish between a solution and a colloid. Finally, there's a suspension, and these are very large particles. They're so large that they actually sink to the bottom of a solution. They, do, they can also exhibit the Tyndall effect, and it's considered like sediment that forms at the bottom. So you might have muddy water, for example, where if you have sand and dirt and et cetera sitting at the bottom, of the water that would be considered a suspension. So suspensions are similar to a solution but contain particles so large that they will settle to the bottom unless constantly stirred. The clay particles are considered suspended rather than dissolved. Contains particles which are separable by filtration. So if you wanted to filter out these particles then you could do so. Suspended particles are much larger in size than the solvent particles which is why they sink to the bottom. In a colloid, the particles are an intermediate size between a solution and a suspension. It'll look like a solution, but it's actually not a solution. And some examples are fog and smoke. And you can tell when it's a colloid because it exhibits what's known as the Tyndall effect. So if you can look at the example here, this is a solution, while the one on the left is a colloid. And the reason you can tell is because you can see the beam of light through the colloid, but you cannot see the beam of light through a solution. And the reason is because the particles are floating in the colloid and they're very tiny, but they do scatter light as light passes through, whereas the particles in a solution are, have dissolved, so they've disappeared, so they're not going to scatter the light. 